are in listen-only mode. Uh, hi everyone, this is uh, Hendrik. I'm uh, here with uh, Anne and we're both from uh, analysts from Distimo and we will uh, uh, go today to the main findings of our uh, monthly report on app downloads, Amazon App Store versus Google Play. Um, yeah, first I will give a short introduction about uh, Distimo, our company, and then Anne will, uh, will walk you through the main findings of the report. And I will also, uh, during, during the findings, I will also give some uh, live demonstration of how we get that data from uh, our, one of our products, Distimo App IQ. So, uh, yeah, first a short introduction about the company. Um, so, uh, Distimo is uh, one of the leading uh, App Store analytics firms. And uh, for this, uh, yeah, we work a lot of data. So first, I'd like to give a short uh, uh, introduction on how we get our data. So uh, basically, we have two data sources. And the first one is publicly available App Store data. So this is basically the data you, uh, you will see when you uh, enter the stores yourself as a consumer. So this, this includes information about uh, rankings, uh, which categories applications are published in, pricing, of applications, uh, these type of things, and we collect this every day for all the major app stores uh, in uh, in every country. So this uh, we collect this every day, a lot of data. Um, and another uh, another of our data sources is a sample of transactional data. So this is real data uh, of the the actual downloads and revenues uh, of of, of some uh, of a sample of applications that are available in the uh, in the app stores. Uh, we get that data from um, one of our products, and that is App Analytics. So first, I'd like to get, tell something about that. Uh, this demo, App Analytics, this is a tool with which developers can monitor the daily uh, downloads and revenues of their own applications. And uh, this is a free tool, and it's really uh, it's really helpful because uh, it, it works again uh, for all all of the major app store platforms, so Google Play, Apple App Store, uh, Amazon App Store, Windows Phone, etc. All the major app stores are supported, so you no longer have to log in every day to each of the developer portals of these application stores, but you can find all the downloads and revenues automatically imported in this tool. And uh, yeah, so you only have to log into uh, to Distimo App Analytics. So it's a free tool, so uh, yeah, I uh, can only recommend to, uh, to just uh, check it out. And this is our free product, and our second product, which is our paid product, uh, is Distimo App IQ. And what we do is with uh, we, we combine the two data sources, so on the one hand the public available data and uh, the sample of uh, application data uh, or of, of real downloads and revenues. And if we com uh, combine these two data streams, we can uh, make estimations of all applications, uh, all ranked applications in the market. So we know uh, we make estimations of uh, revenues and downloads of every application uh, for every day per country. So with FIQ, you can get insight into these, uh, these estimations. And so you really have a day-to-day -day view of what your competitors are doing, for example. So, yeah, it's a really uh, useful tool. It's now available for uh, the Apple App Store and Google Play. And we will very soon uh, implement uh, Amazon App Store as well. And all the data from this report and what we will show you in this webinar is also uh, coming from this demo App IQ data. Um, so, yeah, that uh, was the, the introduction about, uh, about this demo. So, uh, we'll give the word to uh, Anne now, and uh, she will uh, guide you through the findings of the report. So, uh, Anne, please go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Hendrik. Uh, like uh, Hendrik already told you, um, or explained to you, uh, we focus this report on the Amazon App Store as we try are trying to get uh, Amazon App Store in AppIQ as well. Um, there's a lot going on in the Amazon App Store. It started as an Android App Store two, two years ago in the US and it expanded to the UK, France, Germany, Spain, Italy and Japan by the end of 2012. And uh, recently Amazon announced that it will um, expand the store to nearly 200 countries in the near future. So that's all very exciting what's going on in there. And in the meantime, 
Well, we are trying um, to get daily estimates of the downloads in the Amazon App Store as well. Um, I will present the first results, um, which are the uh, estimated download uh, volumes and one-off revenues of top application and top publishers. Um, yeah, it will be. Uh, we're working on it very hard, so uh, I'm very uh, curious what you all think about that. Uh, how did we study uh, this? Um, like Hendrik uh, explained, we have two main uh, data sources: the publicly available um, data, such as rankings, uh, publisher names, uh, prices, etc., and we have the transactional data of our app analytic users. And um, all data. Uh, he presented this focus on the U.S. and mainly about uh, March 2013. Um, just the first picture to get you started all. Um, here you can see the, yeah, the, yeah, the, the proportions of the two st uh, stores, main Android stores, Google Play and Amazon App Store, uh, in the number of available applications. So this is not download volumes yet. We'll come to that in a minute. Um, as you can see, um, um, we did a report on uh, Amazon App Store in January 2012. Both stores have, have grown a lot, and um, especially the, the free number of applications have, um, have grown uh, a lot. If you compare the, the one to another, in January, Google Play was almost 14 to larger in terms of number of available applications. And now it's uh, around eight times uh, larger. So Amazon has gained significant ground um, towards uh, Google Play. Um, if you, yeah, I don't have it on the slide, but you have to trust me. Um, you see the same proportions in the number of downloads, um, sort of. Um, in March 2013, uh, Amazon Epson had 16 million free downloads uh, for the top 200 application and uh, for the top 200 paid application at 1.6 million downloads uh, for Google Play the top 200 um, free um, downloads were nearly 200 million so that's more than 10 times as big as well and for Google and for the paid downloads um, Google Play had 5.3 million paid downloads which makes Google Play um, compared to the top 200, about three times as, uh, as big. Um, if we see how the top three applications look like, we have them over here, the top 10 free applications in the Amazon App Store in the US in, uh, from March 2013, the most downloaded free applications, Temple Run 2, by Mind Studios, um, followed by uh, Word for fix, fix one, <laughs> full fix one word, excuse me, and uh, subway service. Um, there are quite some changes uh, at the top. I see a lot of errors and new applications going on. So um, that's quite interesting to see that it's not a steady group, but there is a lot of dynamics going on uh, around there. And I see, especially for the, the, the um, the, the, the four fix one word apps were made a huge jump from the previous rank um, from place 46 and 160. Um, uh, like I mentioned before, when comparing the number of, of downloads of the Google Play and the Amazon App Store, um, here are three examples of how it um, in which wallet now, my tongue is catching uh, up, um, how it is on, on app level. It differs hugely among different apps, and here are just three examples, and uh, Hendrik will tell you something more about it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so um, yeah, this shows uh, just an example of a few apps that are available in Google Play and in uh, the Amazon App Store. So uh, I just want uh, to show how uh, we get this data from uh, from AppIQ. So 
this is uh, Distimo FIQ, and what you see here are the leaderboards for uh, for March uh, 2013. So these are the best performing uh, applications in terms of downloads in uh, Google Play in March. So uh, these are not the yeah. As, uh, as we told before, it's now uh, available for the Amazon App Store, uh, for Apple App Store, and Google Play only. So um, these are the, the. This is so that's why we cannot show the Amazon App Store in uh, App IQ now. But uh, this is uh, uh, Google Play. So here, for example, we see on the 15th spot we see uh, uh, Fruit Ninja, and um, we we can also see it has uh, 2.3 uh, about 2.3 million. Uh, uh, downloads in that month in the US this is so um, yeah this is the same thing as we saw in the previous slide that Anne shows uh, the number of downloads for, uh, for for Fruit Ninja free in Google Play is about uh, 2.3 uh, million uh, downloads so um, yeah so, so this we have make that this available for uh, for every country and uh, for every month uh, for for uh, for these stores so you can uh, have a good overview with estimated downloads of the of these of all the the top performing applications. But you can also, if you like, for example, if you want to zoom in on Fruit Ninja a little bit more, you can uh, add these app to App IQ, and you can view uh, the downloads of this application on a daily basis. So this is what you see here. Um, they, these are the the downloads for uh, for Fruit Ninja Free in the in the Google Google Play in the U.S. and you see the downloads on a daily basis. So normally um, the the downloads uh, are about uh, I think it's around seven, seventy five thousand downloads. So this is on a daily basis, and in the end it is declining again a little bit. So it's a it's a real uh, valuable information if you just want to know uh, what your competitors is do are uh, is doing. For example, you see here at uh, at uh, at Christmas you see a huge spike in downloads. Uh, it, uh, this application had almost 150,000 downloads on a on a day with Christmas, and then again it uh, yeah it, it dropped a little bit again to uh, about uh, around 80,000, 70,000, and in the end it's. Uh, the last uh, most recent days, it's uh, it's about 60, uh, 65,000. So uh, yeah, this is just to show what you can do with uh, with FIQ, and uh, pretty soon we will uh, make this available. This, these estimated downloads, because these are all estimates uh, for uh, for uh, for Amazon App Store as well. So um, yeah, now uh, go back to uh, to end with uh, the the rest of the findings of the report. Yeah, thank you. Uh, here you see an overview of the top paid applications as well for the Amazon App Store March 2013. And number one, Minecraft, uh, known app. It's not a, you know, it's not a, just a number one in the Amazon App Store. It's, it's high in other stores as well. Um, the more the, the this monthly. Uh, this saw far less change, although the, the number of errors on the millions in the free applications it, it were just small changes and there's only one new application uh, in this list. So it's a far less dynamic top um, list. And as you can see there are you know, less names, etc. Yeah, the, the only big mover uh, is a nail salon, uh, and it came from rank 207 to rank 10. So yeah, that's the end of the top. Um, and now it's here to know. Yeah, with the price uh, presented uh, here and the number of daily estimated, we're also able to uh, make an estimation of the uh, yeah gained one-off revenues uh, in the Amazon App Store. So that will be able to add a queue as well. And here we have another uh, three examples of, uh, of app level, how the proportion of uh, monthly downloads is between in Google Play and an Amazon App Store. You see that, uh, of course, the numbers are far lower. 
but also the proportion of the Amazon App Store is way, yeah, it's more in balance with the, the Google Play. And here the, the highest example is around 3.4, and the third example, the Monkey Preschool Lunchbox, has even more downloads in the Amazon App Store than it has in Google Play. So it's quite interesting to see what's going on in the, in the paid Amazon App Store. Um, and I think that Hendrik has another example, or he has <laughs> no? Oh, he hasn't. So I'll go on, and I'll show you another playlist. Um, with the daily uh, estimated downloads of applications, we're also able to, to make an, uh, yeah, a list of what are the top publishers. And aggregate all the, the, the knowledge we have of the application to the, the right publishers. And here we see an overview of March 2013 in, in the US, where we see where the number one is steady at its place, so the top three is steady. Rovio Entertainment, with the best application on Mars, the cruise. Not Angry Birds, the cruise. That's maybe interesting. And the other names over here are also known, uh, yeah, most of us are known publishers. And we see here again on number four, the food uh, media free, so it's um, it's, good, it's good to see. Um, so these uh, overviews will also be available in um, and I will show you how it looks like in the Google Play right now. So we have here with the leaderboards, uh, Hendrik just showed the top apps overview for the Google Play and now we have a new tab for publishers which mainly gives you the, the, the same kind of overview uh, I'm just showing you uh, in, uh, for Amazon you see the, the, the rank and how it's changed the publisher and you know a little bit more information now of what the best app was but this is probably something in the future will, will come here as well um, so we have the top publishers uh, overview already available for Google Play and Apple App Store and Amazon uh, will, uh, yeah, will complete that for the, for the time being uh, in the future. Uh, and then I asked you if you have any questions on the report and I got one question so I'll try to give an answer to that as well. Is, um, is Amazon app selling more educational apps and games in uh, Google Play or are its numbers growing? Um, it was quite so nice to get a little more detail on what's behind the report because I didn't go into categories right there. And um, well, not surprisingly, the games category is the, the largest in the Amazon App Store. Um, when you're looking at the number of available apps, education is the, the second largest category, but when you're looking at download volumes, it's just a mere uh, the seventh or eighth category. And then games is followed by entertainment, music, utilities, social networking, kids, productivity, and then education. So um, it doesn't look like Amazon App Store is uh, selling more education apps. And I just looked at it. To, uh, uh, Fast really to look at it, um, how the proportion is to Google Play, and well, it isn't that different. So, no, probably no, is the, uh, the answer to the question. Uh, what brings me really to the conclusion of the, of the report is that, um, yeah, it is quite interesting that, that Amazon Epson is sort of catching up with Google Play, especially in the, in the paid part. And, um, you will be able to follow this yourself in EPAQ in the near future. Have you anything to add, Hendrik? No? No, I'm agree. That's, no, that's it. it. Yeah, was it? Yeah, thank you all for listening and hopefully uh, till next time.